Problem Solving Approach and Elevator Cable Problem. Problem Solving, a general approach. Number one, read the problem carefully. Reread if needed. Sketch it out or draw a free body diagram as necessary. List the given variables and any appropriate constants and the variable that you're looking for. Select or derive, I like deriving, I don't like to memorize equations, an appropriate equation to use. Then solve for the missing variable without numbers. Notice we haven't talked about numbers yet. We do it with algebra. Then finally, put the numbers in and solve for numerical answer and check that you have the right units. What's critical is define what you're looking for, and you have to define your object of interest. Newton's laws can be applied to all objects. If you have multiple objects in a problem, you can use Newton's laws to write equations for all of them. And you can solve these equations for all of the objects. Carefully choosing which object to work with could lead to a quicker and easier path to the solution. But you'll get the same answers either way. Some will just be easier to get. And that's frankly what you're looking for. Our first problem is the elevator cable. We have an 1800 kilogram elevator moving up and down on a cable. Calculate the tension force in the cable when the elevator moves at a constant speed upward, moves at a constant speed downward, accelerates upward at a rate of 2.4 meters per second squared, or accelerates downward at the same rate. And this outfit here, in case you were wondering, is a leisure suit from the 1970s. The first thing you do on this one, you don't have to draw a sketch. We already have a sketch, right? That's over here. What's our object of interest? The elevator. The person here is not relevant to the problem. So draw a free body diagram showing all the forces on the cable that supports the elevator. What do we have? We have tension force upward that's provided by the cable, right, like this. And then what else do we have? The elevator's weight, which is mg, which is downward acting in this direction. Also, add the direction of the acceleration somewhere near the free body diagram. In this case, there is no acceleration, so just write in A equals zero. And why is it A equals zero? Well, whenever you see the phrase, move at a constant speed, that means the acceleration is equal to zero. So we write A equals zero. The next step, after we have our free body diagram, is to write Newton's second law key thing here. The sum of the forces is a vector sum. That means we're going to say vectors in the up direction are positive and they are negative in the down direction. You can actually choose whatever you'd like, but that's pretty much the standard for this course. This will apply to all forces and the acceleration. And by vector sum, that means you would add numbers. For example, if you have one going up, which is plus five, and the one going down is minus three, you add those two. So it would be plus five plus a minus three. Now, what is plus a minus three? That's just minus. So it would be five minus three. So let's see how that works here. Here's Newton's second law along with the acceleration. So the sum of the forces is ma. What are our forces? We have tension in the up direction, so that's a positive. Then we have mg in the down direction. So you can see here's that plus. We're adding the forces, but we're adding a negative number. Why? mg is going down. Our acceleration is zero. So m times zero is zero. So we have tension minus mg equals zero. Then we add mg to both sides. Do I have room here to put it? Plus mg. And then I put it on the other side, plus mg. These cancel, and we're left with the tension force is equal to mg. Now that we have the algebraic solution, we can finally substitute in the numerical values for the variables. We do this for a couple reasons. At this level of science, we want you to know the right equations and the concepts and be able to solve things. We're not so concerned if you get the wrong answer. So if you get all the way to this point here and you have a good free body diagram, you've got most of the points for your question. Then you put the numbers in and we can clearly see if you did the right substitution so there's some more credit. And if you just make a mistake here, big deal. We know you know the physics. We know you put the right variables in. Maybe your calculator you misfigured it. So we're not going to worry about that so much. So we do put in our mass 
and our acceleration, we get 17,644 newtons. We're also not going to worry about significant figures here in the class. Typically, if your givens have two or three numbers here instead of zeros, you want to have two or three numbers in your answer. But you certainly don't want to have five. That's too many. So we're going to standardize a rule here. Have three digits like this in your answer. So we don't need the 44, so we round that, and it rounds down to 17,600 newtons. We're on to part B now. Now we're moving at a constant speed downward. Free body diagram is the same as the one we just had for when your elevator's moving up at a constant speed. Tension is still pulling it up, and gravity is still pulling it down, and there's still zero acceleration. We'll repeat Newton's second law just for practice. We have the sum of the forces, and that's a vector sum. It means you need to know the direction of your forces. That equals ma. A is still zero. Our forces are going to be tension in the up direction, that's positive, plus a negative mg, down direction force. So we have ft minus mg is equal to zero. And hey, look at this. We get the same answer. Tension is equal to mg. Substitute in, and we get the same answer. Now what's interesting here is the box. The tension force in the cable, when it's moving with a constant velocity, that is zero acceleration, either up or down, is equal to the weight of the elevator when it rests. Because weight is what? Weight is mg. Now we're going to have this elevator accelerating upward at a rate of 2.4 meters per second squared. That means its velocity is changing at the rate of 2.4 meters per second in the up direction. Our forces will still say the same, still in the same direction. Tension still pulling us up. The acceleration is positive this time. Why? It's in the upward direction. So we have the sum of the forces is equal to ma. We have ft minus mg. That's what we had previously, right? Because mg is down. This time, ma does not equal zero. We have to keep it in our equation. We want to isolate tension, so what do we do to this equation here? Well, we will add plus mg to the left side and also plus mg to the right side. So we have the, uh, this will cancel here, and on the right side we'll have mg plus ma, or ma plus mg, right? It doesn't matter. ma plus mg is equal to mg plus ma. You're just reversing the addition order, just fine. I'll put it in numbers. Is 2 plus 3 the same as 3 plus 2? Yes. Same thing works for variables. And we take one last step. We've got an m in front of both. So we pull that out. We factor out the m. It'll just make the math a little easier on the next slide. Now we substitute in the numerical values. Always the last step. Here's our mass, 1,800 kilograms. Here's the gravitational acceleration, 9.8. Here's our acceleration of the elevator, and here's our units, right, for our acceleration. So we're going to get units-wise kilogram meters per second squared, and another name for that is newtons. So we get 21,960 newtons, which we will round up to 22,000 newtons. What do we notice about this? That tension is now greater than the weight of the elevator when it rests. That means this term here is actually bigger than mg. Our diagram doesn't show that. Not a big deal. We didn't know ahead of time what it would be, so it's more important to get the direction of the vectors correct than their actual magnitude. And if we wanted to redo this, right, which won't be necessary, we could draw ft like that and mg like that. Critical piece on the free body diagrams is the vector direction. Unless you know ahead of time that one force is very much smaller than the other, then you can go ahead and uh, draw the arrows that way. But this case we didn't know. Didn't know until we solved the problem. And the last part of the problem, we're accelerating downward at a rate of 2.4 meters per second squared. This free body diagram stays the same except for acceleration is now down. So my sum of the forces is still tension minus mg equals m and what do we do for A? It's in the down direction, so we give it a negative. 
on the next line we actually did two things at once we added mg to both sides so we canceled out the mg and it wound up over here on the right and we multiply m times minus a and get minus ma one more time we factor out the mass and we have tension is equal to m times g minus a last step put in the numbers so here's our mass gravitational acceleration acceleration in the down direction and look at that we're subtracting it this time so this time our tension is 13,300 newtons so the tension is now less than the weight of the elevator at rest so if we had drawn this absolutely perfectly correctly sort of we'd have tension down there and mg would be greater but again we didn't know that before we started solving the problem and that's okay the important thing is the directions and that we get the right answer for the tension force if the elevator is not accelerating that means the velocity is constant then the tension force is equal to the weight of the elevator what's neat about this is it doesn't matter if the elevator is stationary moving upwards at a constant speed or moving downwards at a constant speed all of these mean acceleration is zero it takes a greater amount of tension to accelerate the elevator upwards and less tension is needed if the elevator is accelerating downwards and again we've said it a couple times but you might not draw the lengths of the forces correctly on your free body diagram but you will still get the correct answer in the end as long as the directions are correct and you do the math right